Are you there? Yes, are you there? I've been here for 45 minutes. 45? Wow. That's a long time. That's a long time. I was here too, by the way. I was here too. You couldn't see me, but I could see you. It was uh, it was fascinating. It was fascinating. Did you know I was going to be on? Did you know? Now you know. Now well, you were a mystery guest, but I knew you were you were part of something that was a greater cosmic being. And uh, you know, as a, as as our president, uh, I, I consider you to have. I, mean, I consider it to be an honor and a privilege. Well, you know what? I consider it an honor and a privilege, too. You've had such an illustrious career. You must be so honored to have me on, which I think is incredible. You're so amazing. You've done so many great things. And I think uh, you being on The Apprentice was probably the highlight of your career, I would think. You know. Well, it was a boost. It was a boost. I mean, it's, like, it's like learning to ride a horse. I mean, if you do it too quick, you'll learn to ride a horse too quick and then you might get too much can. confidence, and well, I mean, it's it's spirituality is in complex. I mean, I do Buseyisms, so if you just give me a word, I can come up with other words for the different letters of that word. Really? All right. What about uh, clarity? Clarity. Cl- clarity. Clarity. C. Well, I got to know how to spell them first. Give me oh, one I know. Okay. I guess president was too long, right? That's too long. President. Let me do not. Not? That would be perfect. Like a pretzel knot or a dough knot? No, just an N-O-T knot. Oh, just an N-O-T, like sailing. I'm not a sailor, but I like knots. Well, it's a knot. It's a knot. Here's what I do. I say not. Mm-hmm. N-O-T. Not. Oh. Yeah, see, these are see, even the three letter ones can be, uh, can be cold. very difficult. They can be very difficult. That's why I make it very simple for people. You know, I love the poorly educated. You know that, right? I've said that in my, in my, not that you're poorly educated. I just love the poorly educated. Isn't that a dichotomy though? Something is poor. There's a, there's a, somebody is poorly educated is, is still educated and just, poor or not educated right they're here and a lot of people are here i'm here because i'm a i'm a genius i'm like a stable genius you know what i mean but i think you're very smart too you and i've had some great great conversations and i always walk away thinking wow wow you know because you're a deep guy you're a deep guy well you know i used to dig out swimming pools when i wasn't asked to i was born in goose creek texas 1944 and that was a that was a situation in and of itself. By the way, I don't I don't know anything about I don't know anything about buttered sausage. Let's talk about buttered sausage. Where does it come from? Was it I didn't I didn't come up with that. That's not mine. I didn't do that. That's somebody impersonating me trying to be Gary Busey when he's not Gary Busey because I'm Gary Busey. Well, I know you're Gary Busey, but Gary, let me give you a little bit of a mark. You know, I'm a marketing genius. And and if somebody says something and it's attributed to, to you, run with it. Run with it. That's what I would say. Buttered sausage is huge now because of you, or at least people thinking it's you. It's not you, but it's someone who they think is you. And sometimes that's a good thing. That's a good thing because even now I'm craving buttered sausage and I've never had buttered sausage. Is it any good? I've never had buttered sausage. It's another I mean, thing what, we have in common. Well, why would you put butter on sausage? I mean, butter is a, you put butter on toast or, you know, a bagel maybe. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you know, butter but you sausage. I mean, butter I just, is delicious. Butter is delicious. Butter on rolls, you know, butter on, butter on, bu- butter on green beans. Not that I eat green beans, but you know what I'm saying. Butter on butter is good. Butter, on butter, of butter. They took the lady off the Lando Lakes. Did you know that? The Native American lady? They took her they away. They took her. Yeah, where did they take her to? I don't know. They probably are holding her somewhere, which is even hard, even worse. This is what these liberal, left-wing, radical, Marxist, socialist, fascistic people do. They kidnap Native Americans and take them off their packaging. Well, I, I snorted cocaine off a dog named Chili. My dog, his name was Chili. And I snorted cocaine off him. And people used to say, well, you know, uh, you, you, you snorted a, a cocaine off a chili dog. But, you know, that's as stupid as, as eating a buttered sausage as far as I'm concerned. So you so you did or you didn't snort it off a chili dog? 
I did not. You did not, but your dog happens to be named Chili. Well, here's what happened. I spilled some cocaine on my dog, Chili. No, he's, no. A pe- he's a Pekingese. He looks like a Labrador, but he's a Pekingese. He's got a legs Pekinese. of a Labrador. I like that and name, I, Pekingese. Pekingese. Is, well, and, but, it, but I just I, sp- I spilled some cocaine on him. And so in doing so, I mean, the only thing left to do is, I mean, I could have, I could have like just gave him a, pa- a, a, a bath, but I didn't, I didn't even think that far. I was just like, I'm going to snort that cocaine off the dog. So, I mean, this was, this was at 1981. So, well, listen, listen, I, I used to go to Studio 54. I never snorted cocaine, but a lot of big people, a lot of big people snorted cocaine and they never thought to do it off a dog. So, you're very innovative. You're very innovative in the way you started cocaine because I saw, you know, people doing it on tables, on glass tops, on uh, the back of their hands. You know, I never I never participated myself because I'm a very awake, not woke, but a very awake person. But I think that's great that you didn't waste any of that cocaine because that's the problem in this country. A lot of waste, a lot of waste, a lot of wasted dreams, a lot of wasted patronage, a lot of wasted you know, this and that. Well, it's I think the difficult thing to put your finger on is, is anything that you don't want to put your finger on, like a hot pan or just, you know, uh, you know, or something uh, freshly welded. You don't want to put your finger on that. It will melt your, literally it will melt your skin. It's horrible. Tell me why I was kicked off the apprentice. Because you lost your challenge. You lost your challenge. You know I like you. I thought you did a great job, but your team didn't pull their weight. You had to be fired. And you were. And you were a man about it, which I thought was great. A lot of these people are crying, crying their eyes out. Oh, sir, sir, sir. But you, you went out there like a true patriot. You walked out of there. You did a great job. And I didn't realize how big you were. You're a big guy. You're a big guy. I mean, I've seen you in a lot of movies and a lot of movies, but I, and I, you were, um, who was the guy with the rock and roll from Texas near you? Um, Buddy, Buddy Holly. Holly. I, had, I, had to, I had to lose some weight for Buddy Holly because I was yeah. eating chicken wings and I was, you know, walking backwards in my car every day and that didn't do any good. But I was in a movie where I played Bear Bryant. Oh, and, uh, and so that, that hero. was American hero, Bear Bryant. So I had the shape of someone that would be in that category. And, you know, I have an endomorphic body and I, I take full advantage of it when I'm, whenever possible. Yeah, I'm not sure what shape I am. I'm a big guy. You know, I'm like 6'3", 215 pounds. I'm in very good shape for a guy my age and my size, you know. And so are you. So are you. I remember seeing you in a, was it a lethal weapon? And you put your hand over the flame. You put your head over the flame. Yep. Wasn't that yeah, good? Yeah, it was, yeah. that was good. I don't know how you did that. That was like a magic. Well, trick. well it wasn't a real flame. I'll tell. I'll tell you that much. Oh, special it was, effect. Uh, it was, special it was effect. a fake, fake flame. Yeah, you know, I I could have been a big actor. I was in Home Alone too. Did you know that I was in Home Alone too? I, I gave, it was a very pivotal scene. I gave Macaulay Culkin uh, the directions to the check in at the plaza. I hadn't done that. That film. Now it's worth a billion dollars, and it's a shame because they're disowning me. Christopher Columbus, if that's his real name, uh, the director, he, he says, I, I forced myself into the film. Gary, you know you can't force yourself into a movie, right? Am I right? You can't force – look, you can put a potato in a yellow leotard, but what's that going to do for you? Exactly. You know, it's just you, an ugly you, leotard. You know, Lumpy, you know, you, ugly leotard. I mean, you have to, you have to really think about the magistrate – and and the overall arc of something that's not necessarily in your grasp. Uh, I mean, I used to drink squirt, not mm-hmm. the uh, not the soda, and I didn't like it. But you know, people told me to keep doing it. It's good for you. It's enzymes helps your cells out. But um, I kind of wish I never started. To be honest, the, the squirt you mean. You know, the squirt and you know what you have to do is a long is a long you know we don't really want to hear that today but no but i find um, it fascinating i find it fascinating because you've you've never stopped doing what you're doing and uh, you're always there being who you are there's nobody else who could be you other than someone who says they're you but they're not you because that's that's the whole problem in this country it's a lot of people plagiarism plagiarism is a big problem it's it's a horrible horrible thing well, what are you supposed to do if you don't plagiarize? I mean, 
and all these different people running around doing Gary Busey impressions. And here I am, and I'm sitting on top of the tank and the tank's starting to overturn and I'm, I'm just stuck on the tank. I might as well be strapped to whatever because I'm sitting on a tank. Well, that sounds like one of your movies. You'd be strapped to a tank and it's on fire and then you have to get free. And then, you know, you, the tank, it blows up, but you're running away. Because in those movies, those guys are always running away from the explosion. Did you ever notice that? It's very exciting. And you got to live that. I didn't get to, I have to do, I build buildings and run the country and be the greatest president in the history of presidents. But you are one of the greatest actors in the history of actors who, you know, who, who you're saying didn't say buttered sausage, but I think I think you should run with the buttered sausage. Listen, if I could get in cahoots with you and we could maybe manufacture some sort of buttered sausage, I would be willing to do that. I don't know how thick the links need to be or what the flavor needs to be, but maybe Standard just... Sauce, I think. Or you know what we should do? Make them the length of a stick of butter. You know what I'm saying? That way they match up perfectly. They match up perfectly. And I, I can see it now. Gary Busey's buttered sausage. Oh, I think I that's like good. That. I think it has a nice ring to it. Has a nice, and I'm involved in many, many products, as you know. Uh, Trump steaks, Trump vodka, Trump wine. Uh, I think this would be a, a big win. A big win for us. We would do great with Gary Busey's buttered sausage. I'd endorse it. You know what I mean? We make a killing. I would love to do that. I would love to do that with you immediately. And maybe start drawing out some sketches. I'm pretty good at drawing out sketches. I can maybe do some 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 drawings of the buttered sausage and what they might look like in the packaging and and maybe I could bring those to you and we could go from there. I listen, I ain't doing anything right now. I'm just just hanging out, you know. Well, you come down to Mar-a-Lago. We'll give you. We'll roll out the red carpet for you. I'll show you the whole thing. I think we've got something here that's going to be really, really big. And you have oh, so many movies. You know, I've always wanted to ask you this, even when you were you on The Apprentice. You've died in a couple of films. Um, was in Point Break you, when you got shot, you went down. I thought that was amazing. No one gets shot the way you get shot. I have to tell you, you were on well, the ground. And Keanu Neves was calling over to you. I thought that was wonderful. Well, I was, you know, I might, I might have died a few times in the movies, but I've also almost died a few times in real life, you know, mm -hmm. a motorcycle accident and those kind of things that happened to me. And, you know, there's a, a swirling white light and there's a, you know, there's a, there's a sequined a staircase and you go down the sequin, you know, I, I, I've done it all. It's a sequin for the weekend and they had all these different, but you don't remember it all, but you can remember the tiny things. You like see this. visions, right? You see visions. You see visions. You see colors. You see, you know, they talk about bright white light, but it, it, it just seemed like blur to me. It almost seemed like a blur, uh, some sort of a cosmic nation. I mean, I don't believe in aliens necessarily, but if I saw an alien, I'd probably uh, probably call the cops. Well, when I'm back in, I'm releasing all of the alien paperwork that I didn't do last time. I think it's going to be, a lot of people are going to be amazed. And I think the aliens have something to do with the afterlife. That's just me. That's just me. Uh, but I think, you know, when you, people say when they pass away, they see everyone coming up around them, like little versions of them, their family and friends. I, I think that's the aliens, actually. That's me, you know? Well, I mean, aliens are aliens could be anything. Aliens could be illegal aliens, regular aliens, uh, just al ions. You know, just if you just take the al part, right? That's also another abusism. Al, al, after, after, after uh, lawn, after al lawn, al lawn. Uh, Alon, yeah. Alon, Alon. I like that better than aliens. Aliens has such a negative connotation. It does. It does, Illegal but it does Alon. it. Illegal Alon. I think that's much nicer. What are your thoughts of divine intervention and, and sequencing and, 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 and artificial intelligence, like we said, is, is 
is it going to be bigger this year? How's it going to affect? I think, it's, I think AI, as they call it, AI, uh, artificial intelligence is a horrible, horrible thing. Uh, that no, there's no original ideas. People are just recycling things and uh, pretending to be somebody else. It's really, really sad as far as sequencing. I like sequences that go forward. I think that's the best sequencing. But some people like sequences, you know, like they like the middle that goes first and the ending that goes before that because they mess up the sequence. I'm not a big fan of that. I'm more of a straight shooter. And of course, uh, the first thing that you mentioned is something that I've always been interested in is divine intervention because, you know, without God, you don't have God. You know what I'm saying? So then you can't have the divine intervention. And that's what I need to get back in. I need divine intervention. I have so many people working against me. Terrible, terrible people. Uh, so those three things, divine intervention, sequencing, and AI, I think they're very, very important. And uh, a lot of people, bad people, bad people are using all three of those in that order, in that sequence. And it's sad. Uh, You're saying they're sequencing the sequence? Yes, somebody's manipulating the sequence in a sequence that shouldn't be sequenced uh, because the sequence itself is, should be happening naturally, don't you think? Well, I mean, I think a lot of things. Sometimes I don't think. Sometimes when you don't think, it's the best. I had a therapist that says, what you need to do is make your mind go blank. I said, I'm already there. Wow. <laughs> I, I don't know how to do that because I'm so smart. I don't know how to just go blank like that. But I've been, I've heard people you know, some people that I know say meditation does that makes your mind go blank, makes your mind go blank. I don't want to do that. I would be afraid that it would never come back. Like an Etch-A-Sketch, like you shake it and it's blank. I don't want that. I don't want that. I want the lines. I want the lines. What are your New Year's resolutions? Uh, to become the president again. I thought you were the president. Well, I am the president. I'm just not in the White House because the um, the uh, Marxist, socialist, fascistic, uh, terrible, terrible people, communists, uh, they used uh, lasers and they used satellites and dead people, a lot of dead people. I don't care what anybody says. That There's video of coffins opening in Georgia and thousands of dead people going to voting places and voting. And then like putting on a, a another shirt and then going someplace else and voting even more. Uh, and then they all went back to their coffins and their coffins went back down into the ground. So you can't tell me dead people didn't vote. Dead people didn't vote. I think dead people are voting. Dead people are voting all the time. If you look at the eyes of, of one whispering and coming down the street, you look in their eyes and you go, this is something else. This isn't something I signed up for. They have right. dead fingers. They have they have heavy fingers. You right. got a heavy it's, finger, you're gonna it, break a pencil. These are terrible people, the dead people. And and I don't know any good dead people. Do you know any good dead people? Because maybe there's good dead people. I don't think so. I think most of the dead people are bad dead people. The good dead people are staying in their coffins. They're not voting, you know. Well, I've always said that the truly weak die. The truly weak die, you know. I mean, when you so really true. think so about true. it. Somebody weak. Weak people, so many weak people, and they're dead. And they're they're yeah. the ones that are voting. It's the weak people. It's the people you don't want voting that are voting. And that's one of the big problems. What else is going on? Well, um, I'm looking for Melania. If any of your viewers have seen her, let me know. Uh, we have a reward, which is uh, very nice. Some, somehow she got her ankle bracelet off and got out of Mar-a-Lago. But I have a great attorney, Alina Haba. Alina Haba, she's very attractive. Very By the way, are you with anybody? Because you're a big movie star. I'm sure you've been with a lot of women. A lot of women. One of my favorite things is to talk about women. And I love women. No one loves women the way I love women, by the way. Did you know that? Did you know that? I'm a, I know, I'm a I've great seen lover of women. I've seen photographs. But you must have been with some really hot starlets in the day, right? I've been, well, I've had, yeah, you know, I've had pretty good looking women before, but, uh, you know, I don't really judge a woman on their looks. I, I'm, more, I'm more interested in how hard they can grip firewood or just yeah. run. Uh, you know, I, I like a trooper. 
like that's Zoe it. Is well, you know what? I appreciate that you appreciate that. That's not my kind of girl. I like the feminine, dainty uh, ones with long nails, so they won't be ripping wood. That's for sure. And they wear high heels, so they're not running either. But they go and they do what's called Pilates. Pilates. Have you heard of this? This Pilates thing? Yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, he he helps a lot of women out and gets their butts very firmly shaped, very firmly shaped. Okay, well, I mean, what is that? I don't. Uh, what's that have to do with me? I mean, what? How am I supposed to be a, responsible to that? I mean, I've never done anything like that. I've done push-ups. I've done a lot of vocal training. Mm. I've uh, cut my hair a bunch of times. Your hair uh, always looks great. Always on point. Always on point. It feels good. It feels good. And, it, you know, listen, when you look good, you feel good. And when you feel good, you can take over the world or at least your country. That's what I That's what I hope to do. And how, how are you going to do that? Way, how are you going to get these dead people from not voting? Oh, we're sealing the coffins. We're putting cement in. Uh, we're caging. We're locking up the cemeteries. Uh, we're going to do a lot of stuff that the dead people weren't expecting. Because, you know, dead people have a lot of time on their hands. A lot of time. And all they're thinking about is one thing, voting. Voting, voting, voting. Right, so right, we're going to make right, sure right. they're not thinking about voting. Uh, we're going to make sure the dirt is very heavy on their coffins, that the uh, cemetery gates are, you know, really, really bound with a very heavy, heavy gauge of metal and uh, rod iron, rod iron. Uh, we're going to keep just, them in the place. Why don't you just kill these dead people? Well, we could do that. I'm sure we need like a silver bullet or like a stake. Um, something like that, but that's very labor intensive. And I think just putting pouring cement in this uh, in the cemetery is probably the best way. I'm a big cement guy, by the way. You probably know that from all the buildings. So I think it's going to be a fantastic way to take care. And do you, have you done? Did you build one of your houses in Malibu or something? Was that you? I, heard I tried to build a hot tub, but. I just ran out of I ran out of glue basically. Yeah, out of glue. Yeah, because you need special glue for that. You need like plumber's glue. It's purple. It's purple. I know that because you know I've built million dollar uh, buildings and uh, multi million dollar hotels. What's the key to success? The key to success is passion. You got to be passionate about what you do because otherwise you can't do it. You got to love it. You got to love it. If you don't love what you're doing, then you don't love it. And if you don't love it, you're not going to do it or you'll do it and you'll hate doing it. I love what I do because I'm so incredible. What do you love doing? I love doing this. I love talking about myself. I love uh, <clears throat> talking about my books. I love talking about my success. I love talking about how incredible I am, how I'm a stable, stable genius. And I like making deals. No one makes deals the way I make deals. You, you know that. You saw me with Kim I mean, Jong-un, you, you know, and all these people. I mean, I've, I've shaken your hand before and I've never felt anything so soft. And mm -hmm. uh, what do you attribute that to? L lotion or... Lotion, a very fine, silky lotion. I don't like, I don't, I like soft hands, uh, but I have big hands, as you can tell. These are very big hands. And uh, you know what they say, big hands, big gloves. I've had no complaints down there, if you know what I mean. Uh, I know you're not really interested in that, but women are very, um, I'm very attracted to women. And uh, that's why I had two beauty pageants because I, I was attracted to women on such a large scale. I had to have beauty pageants to have enough women around me uh, to keep me interested in them because I get bored very easily with women. And what are you going to do? How are you going to, how are you going to, I don't know. I, 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 where are you, what was going to, uh, can you help me with my question? What am I going to do next? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have a dinner uh, and I'm going to have a cheeseburger. Well done with greasy French fries. Don't you love greasy French fries? They're the best. They're the absolute best. And then them. I'm going to have a Diet Coke, which I know you like. You like Diet Coke. So you and I, that's something we have in common, Diet Coke. Uh, I don't know where you stand on cheese. You're not a vegan, are you? Anything weird like no, that? No, no. Okay. I'm a, if anything, I'm Episcopalian. Oh, that's good. That, that means you can have the buttered sausage and the cheeseburgers if you're Episcopalian. Well, yeah, but the cheeseburgers, you got to be careful because when you say, say to the chef, well done, 
it can mean two things. You mean well done, nice going. It can mean well done, like. Is this and if they do it well right, done? it means both. If they do it right, it means both. Unless you ordered medium rare. Medium, medium rare. That's true. That's true. You had me on that one. You had me on that one. And I if you say to someone, if someone's got a, a, a burger that's uh, medium rare and you say, well done, maybe they think you're done cooking it when really you just want it, you, you do want it well done. Yeah. Or the, the chef wants a compliment. You know, because right. they're very egotistical of the chefs now. You know, they all want to be on. They all want to be outside of the kitchen. You know what I mean? That's the other problem. You know, everybody wants credit for things they should be doing anyway. You go to a dry cleaner and they have a tip jar. And you're like, what am I tipping you for? They're handing me a, a garment I paid right. for that I gave you. And you want a tip? Right. I don't get it. I don't get it. I always thought it was weird that they'd put money in tip jars and not just tips, like the tips of things. Right. The you know, I always thought that was a, kind of a weird universal concept that doesn't make any sense, you know. Right. But you know what? I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to put the tips of things in tip jars. Yeah. And you probably only need one jar because, I mean, how many tips are there? I mean, you got, what do you got? You got your toenail tips. Right. You got try your tips. tips. I'll, st I'll stick a tri tip in the jar. See how they like that. Yeah. Do you have any questions for me? Well, I want to know about Point Break. I think it was an exciting movie. Um, I wanted to know about what, what was Patrick Swayze like? What was Kiyasho News, uh, Reeves, uh, whatever his name was. He's got a very interesting name. Oh, and I Kiana. heard at the end of the movie, they had to reshoot it because no one liked it. No one liked it. And they reshot it and it became a big hit. Well, they used, they used somebody's uh, surfboard mistakenly. And then the, the the surfboard had an emblem on it. They couldn't get clearance for it, so they had to reshoot a lot of the surfing. And I, I myself was kind of like out of bounds on that because I just didn't feel like surfing a, another go round. So they they superimposed my head, much like the buttered sausage guy did. They put my my head on a, 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 a surfboard, and then and they just shot it that way. But I, I mean. I didn't. I didn't really give. I didn't really give a hoot. Well, you know what? So you just brought up something very interesting about legal legal stuff. And you know, I'm very litigious. I'm involved in four thousand lawsuits right now. Are you suing the guy who's pretending to be you? Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you. I mean, this is the whole point of this interview is that I wanted to do, you know, buttered sausage line of sausage, even though I don't like buttered sausage. I never had buttered sausage. I assume. By the time we produce the buttered sausage, I've had it. I would think so, in the testing phase. So I don't know if I should sue you or him, but you should sue both of us. That way you're covered, and then I'll counter sue you. Okay, but don't do it right away. Let me. Oh, you're gonna let me. Oh, I'm gonna sue you. Right. Sue him. And then right. you're going to sue me. I'm going to sue you. Then, I'll counter sue you. And then we'll both sue him. And that will mean it's like, it's a wipeout. If we both sue him, he's, he's, he's done. He's done. And then you're free and clear on Gary Busey's buttered sausage is, is it sausage or sausages? Buttered sausage. I, really, I believe buttered the sausage, last... So it's singular. So it's singular. Yeah. Let's talk about buttered sausage. You know, I mean, if you asked me this two weeks ago, I'd say, no, I don't want to talk about buttered sausage. I was still a little depressed to see the success of this and have a uh, kind of be out of it. I, I, I gave a speech about it. I gave it my own personal speech about it, but it still makes me sore. So I'd love to get this thing going. I'd love to get the buttered sausage going and be able to get up and running maybe by, you know, April or something. I think that's very, very doable. We can talk to some of the other sausage makers. Top secret. We won't know who they are. But they'll bring us the sausage. We'll do the packaging. I would love to see your face and maybe my face on the uh, on the sausage packaging. But you, everyone knows you. You're the sausage guy at this point. Buttered sausage. Buttered sausage. I love the way that's it's making me hungry, actually, I have to tell you. Let's have lunch in a couple of weeks and let's talk about it and... Uh... You know, let's do it. I want to do it. So let's do it. Let's do Gary Busey's buttered sausage. Let's take a negative and make it a positive.
Or a positive and make it more positive. Because I think it was a positive to begin with. Well, two positives makes it negative, right? Well, that's right. That's why we're only going to have two positives. Three positives will screw this whole thing up. Two positives, we're in great shape. Well, I got to go. I got to go to the bathroom. Me too. Me too. Because, you know, I'm a little older and it's hard for me to sit this long. My feet are getting purple, which is very strange. You got to keep your feet. I keep my feet up when I pee. I keep them up in the air. I have this thing that you put your, yeah, I have a thing you put your feet on. It's got a squatty potty because uh, because uh, I'm getting older and it takes me longer to go. So it's a squatty potty and I put my feet up on the squatty potty. And so my knees are above my chest and it helps me, you know, get, get out what needs to get out. Well, that's just, that's just great. And I appreciate you uh, taking me through your life and through your bathroom activities and you know well, everyone wants to know so yeah that was kind of a scoop that's kind of a scoop for you i never talk about that but well, i think I, I, this has been a great interview i think the numbers for you are going to be off the chart once my people once my people know about this i think you're going to be pleasantly surprised pleasantly surprised how many people watch this well it's just a joy to see you again i haven't seen you since celebrity Apprentice. A long time. I just thought, you know, I just had such a great time on that show. I, was, I mean, I didn't really try hard in high school, but I tried hard on your show. And, you uh, did. You worked very, very hard. And you raised a lot of money for a fantastic charitable organization. What was that organization again? The uh, the Sarah Leapert Foundation. Uh, Sarah yeah. Leapert was a woman who uh, was kind of twisted up like a pretzel from... Uh, lack of hydration and uh she ended up getting into a bathtub and finding some relief from the faucet and that's when she got the she she got the plumbers association involved and they just were able to make up you know different different pipes for different people to be able to be hydrated so they're not left out in the middle of the weird the wilderness that's great. You know what? Hydrating people is so important. And for them to be able to take the money that you raised and put the piping right into her body, the plumbing, as they call it, uh, I think that's wonderful. I could just see in my mind her kind of like just unfolding, you know, and becoming a full person again, as opposed to a pretzel who didn't have enough water. Well, it's like those, remember those, those, uh, those air machines that have like some sort of silk material on them, and then they're always at the the gas stations are jiffy. Oh, the used car and, guys. And, the, and the, no, the things go like this, and the air goes like this. And yeah, I love those things. Those are wonderful. Very entertaining. I see a lot of those. They're very tall, and then they collapse and they go back up. Kind of like me. I'm very resilient. Well, I got, like I said, I got to hit the, hit the bathroom. And, all uh, right. Well, I hope everything comes out. All right. Thank you for having me on your show. I'm glad I surprised you. I love that you have surprise guests because so many people know too much, too much, but you don't know anything. And I think that's great going into a situation because well, it shows how you, how flexible you can be. I couldn't agree with you anymore. I do not know anything. And, uh, I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate your time to be able to come out here and, you know, hang out. I thought you were in the same room as me for about 10 minutes. But, no, I'm uh, in a totally different place. Yeah. I'm not there. That's probably just a pile of laundry or something. All right. Well, have a good one. I hope you do well. We'll talk in a couple of weeks. All right. We'll see you soon. And we're going to do the test on the sausage. And I think you're going to love them. They're going to be delicious. Great. Bye-bye. All right. See you, buddy. See you later. Bye-bye.